Um, and this is on behalf of the um, Force 11 Software Citation Implementation Working Group, uh, including my co-chairs uh, Martin Fenner and Dan Katz, who I think I saw both in the room somewhere. Uh, so uh, my name is Neil Chu Hong. Um, what we've been doing as part of the uh, Software Citation Implementation Group is look at how we improve um, something that kind of touches on what the previous speaker has just been talking about. How do we give credit for people who are doing things in sort of non-standard ways for non-standard outputs? Um, and uh, this is all based on something that was done previously within Force 11, which are the software citation principles, which based on the data citation principles, look at what we should be doing to ensure that we um, recognize contributions made in the form of software outputs. Um, I'm not going to go into the software uh, citation principles here. There was a talk earlier by Dan um, comparing these with the data citation principles. Uh, you can read the paper that's published uh, as well to find out a little bit more. What I want to talk about is how you go from a set of principles to something that is practically useful for researchers and uh, who are using software and developers who are creating software. Um, and the thing that we found as part of the Software Citation Implementation Working Group is that to get from principles, these high-level things which everyone really agrees with, to something that is useful and achievable is a very long journey with many, many twists along the road. Um, when we started off this, uh, we thought that what we would need to do in this working group was write out, uh, in quotes, uh, the small amount of detail needed to implement the principles and then work with all of the different communities, the publishers, the conferences, repositories, indexes, funders, all of whom are participating in Force 11 to implement this extra detail. And obviously, uh, as all of you will know, that small amount of detail in most cases is uh, a lot more than that. Um, as you get, kind of go from the high level to the low level, you end up uh, spreading in, uh, in scope, you end up spreading in um, wordage, and uh, you, you need to kind of keep a bit of focus. And so one of the things that we've been doing as, as a task force within the working group is focusing on understanding what guidance we can provide through checklists. And the reason we've chosen checklists is because they've been proven to be uh, a very useful way of ensuring consistency and completeness in other areas where what you're trying to do is boil down a whole set of guidance or regulations, rules or process into something where the practitioner can uh, easily understand what they need to do to meet the minimum guidance required. Uh, and the best example of this is, for instance, um, in post-surgery checklists. Uh, so if you want to find out more information about why checklists are a good thing, um, I recommend the checklist manifesto uh, to, to read for, for lots of different examples. So what are we trying to do here? We're trying to kind of show people why they should cite software. Uh, and this entire conference has been talking about different reasons why, um, but for us, the, the main one is around this idea of recognition of contribution. So it is part of the research process, so we want to recognize that software is playing a part in this, and also that uh, we are wanting to give credit to the authors of the software. Um, and that's kind of touching again on, on the idea of different types of contributor roles and how we're moving forward from it simply being the person who wrote the paper. Um, the other thing that gets talked about in this space is also around traceability and reproducibility of research results. But in some sense, what I'm going to talk about for the checklists are less focused on reproducibility and more focused on recognition and credit. Because I think there's a danger of trying to cram everything into the citation system. And what we're doing is we're overloading um, something which is really about trying to create these knowledge um, connections uh, that, that really define what it is we mean by research in a particular area. So... We tried to take all of the, the guidance that other people have produced, understand um, how this might differ between different communities, and come up with some way of boiling it down to a very small amount of information that either an author or a developer needs to know about. Um, and so what we come up with, and, and these are the first uh, public drafts that have been released uh, for comment, um, effectively 
two days ago, um, are a set of small questions that we're asking these two different sets of people to ask themselves. So for authors, we're asking them about whether they've um, identified the software that they're using. Um, and this might involve many different things, uh, not just the things that they've, uh, uh, they've written themselves, but also things that uh, they depend on. Um, we're asking them whether they have looked for each of those pieces of software as to whether there's already a recommended citation that they should be using. And ensuring that when they are referencing this in their um, papers that they've created as complete a citation as possible so that it encompasses the recommended citation along with other information that will be useful for readers of their um, publication to understand how the, they use their software um, and what software was used. Um, and the last bit there is just kind of making sure that the way that it is written up complies with the way that the, the journals, um, the different publishers and so on are expecting to see this so that we don't get into the situation where information is being stripped out because it's not in the right format. So that's the checklist for authors um, and uh, we're really trying to keep it to this really small set of questions so that uh, these can easily be incorporated into guidelines for authors on journal websites or on conference websites. And then the thing we need there to, to go with that is the kind of additional guidance that will help the authors understand what, it, what these different questions mean. Um, and so uh, in the actual um, checklist, we have sections and additional guidance that go into other things that people might care about, such as understanding what it means to, to, for a piece of software to have had a significant impact on your research outcomes. So how do you identify that? Um, how do you understand what thing uh, to do with things like code availability statements uh, from publishers? So that's the way that these checklists are split. It's a very small um, kind of bit at the start, which are the questions that are being asked, and then a longer section of guidance to help you interpret those questions. So that was the one for authors. Um, the complementary one is for people who are developing software and trying to make them more um, findable and discoverable. And that's the software citation checklist for developers. And here we're asking questions about ensuring that people have thought about an appropriate license. Um, ensuring that they've described their software properly, including things like versions and authors, um, getting a persistent identifier for um, the, the object, and making sure, and this is where these, are two, these two things are complementary, making sure that they've put the recommended citation into the documentation so that any authors writing articles know how they want to be cited. Um, and there's a lot more, again, additional guidance, um, which... If you have questions about this, come and ask myself or Dan, um, or put thing uh, kind of come along to the discussions we have um, on the Force 11 mailing lists. So the good thing about this is that we can start using this as the basis of different types of um, kind of more subject specific guidance. Um, so we have a couple of examples here of communities that are designed to take things like this forward. Uh, and so, for instance, we have examples from astronomy. Um, there's, uh, in fact, I've forgotten to, to credit where this has come. This has come from um, a post on the AstroBeta blog um, looking at how you can um, take the policy from AES and use this to, to create good um, citations for software and also the geosciences and uh, Shelley Stahl and uh, ESIP as well and Jessica Hausman have been doing a lot of work to try and show how you can do this for the earth sciences. Um, and as we get more and more of these examples, what we hope is that people will be um, uh, more and more able to understand how to do it for their own subject, their own discipline, their own community. Because I think the, the challenge, again, is going down into the detail. Everyone's cultural norms are slightly different, and it's a case of getting that consistency across them. So um, just to kind of wrap up, what's next? Uh, we're looking for feedback on these. Um, as well as going out to um, different authors, editors, reviewers, and publishers and developers, we're looking for feedback from the, the community, that's you, um, on these guidelines. What, what makes it hard to understand them? What do we missed out? Uh, what are the edge cases that we need to be aware of and perhaps need additional, additional guidance on? 
Um, so these have been published um, in draft form in Zenodo, uh, and you can either uh, send comments to myself or the mailing list, um, or comment via issues in our GitHub repository. Um, just to kind of wrap up, there's two other things I wanted to say. Um, one is that I didn't talk a lot about a number of the issues we've seen and the challenges. So I haven't talked about identifiers, I haven't talked about metadata, I haven't talked about tooling, and I haven't talked about unpublished software. So we recognize that all of those four things are still ongoing challenges for getting software citation adopted. And if you want to hear more about that, then come along and uh, join in with the work or ask many of the members of the, the group who are in this room. Um, I wanted to say that this is how you get involved. Um, so um, go along to the Force 11 working um, group pages, click on the link, um, and contribute your experience and implementations. And if you're really, really interested in this sort of area of software citations and want to do more about it, um, there's going to be an event uh, in London on the 4th of December, uh, co-hosted with the Freya project um, on a software graph hackathon. So this is kind of the use case. If we get more things cited, they'll be appearing in the PID graph, and we will be able to uh, look at how we can um, use the, this information to... Uh, to basically improve our knowledge of the scholarly uh, landscape. So, thank you very much. Uh, cool, thank you very much, Neil. Uh, does anyone have any questions? We have time for maybe one question. Uh, yep, just over here. Um, hi, um, <coughs> Scrediman, Skiga Science. Um, we're very uh, happy to test this um, on our editors and reviewers. Um, how exactly would you like feedback? Um, yeah. yeah, so, so th this is a, a very good point. And uh, uh, if anyone else is also um, representing a, a journal and would uh, like to be involved in this, please do get in touch. Um, I think what we're doing is we're looking for, we're looking for a couple of pieces of feedback. Um, one is around the sort of general comments we have on the draft, and the best way for feedback for that is through issues in GitHub. Um, the other thing we're looking for, which I think is speaking more to um, what you're talking about, is more direct feedback around the experiences that perhaps editors or reviewers or authors have in trying to use this guidance, so what they found the pain points are and so on. Um, what we'll be doing there is uh, putting together basically a, a, a survey form that people can use and be directed to that will allow them to, to kind of do more free-form um, evaluation of their experience. So uh, we'll send that along to you, Scott. Thanks. Okay, well, thank you very much again to both of our presenters. Uh, feel free to move on to your next session um, in the next couple of minutes. So thank you very much again. Thank you.